Hey guys, it's Mark with Mark Goes Hiking, and I'm here talking with my friends Doug and Crow. Um, we got Backcountry Pilgrim, that's Doug's channel, and As the Crow Flies. As you probably can figure out, that is Crow's channel. And on this video, uh, we're going to continue talking about all the different gear that each of us likes to take on the trail, kind of our top items in different categories. So in this particular video, we're going to be covering tents footwear, and different lights that we like to take on the trail. So we're going to go ahead and get started and talk about tents. And I'm not going to go first on this one. I'm going to pass the mic over to Doug, and let's see uh, what kind of tent uh, Doug uses. So Doug, what do you have for us? Cool. All right. Well, um, none of my gear is probably going to be a huge surprise to anybody in the uh, backpacking and hiking community because um, I'm pretty much like re-gearing up uh, over the last year. From several different people, I'd heard about this company called 3F over in China. Um, basically, they just make like really uh, good but very inexpensive gear. And then uh, one of their most popular tents, the uh, 3F UL Lanshan 2, I got this thing for uh, 70 bucks. That's like half off of an already very inexpensive tent just to check it out. And I really like it. Um, it comes in at 40 ounces, it's two and a half pounds, so it's not, you know, ultra light, but I mean, it's 70 bucks. It's a, a double trekking pole tent, so you do, and, and so it's not freestanding, you do need to stake it out, um, which is a little scary. Um, there are times where that's not going to work, but um, I've really liked it. I haven't had any trouble with it. The initial setup was not um, very intuitive for me. I had to watch some YouTube videos, and I've got a pretty funny video of trying to understand um, one of the Chinese videos on how to set this thing up. <laughs> um, it was kind of a disaster, but um, it, it's not a difficult tent to set up at all once you just get the idea behind it. And um, yeah, I took it out, first solo backpacking trip, set up like a, a breeze. There's plenty of room I can set up in it. I don't feel claustrophobic at all. I mean, like most two-person tent, you're not really gonna get two people in it unless you're like super good friends and you don't want any of your gear in there with you. But I like to have a little bit of room. And so, uh, yeah, I love this thing. It's been great. And um, I haven't had any issues with it so far. So now, Doug, the, the Land Shan, though, there's no, um, there's no rain fly on that, right? It's like a single wall tent. Is that right? So this one is like a built-in double wall. It's, it's all clipped together. It's a single setup. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so, Crow, you, you have just a single wall tent that you use, though, right? Well, yeah, so I, I use the duplex. I've had it for about six or eight months and uh, have really enjoyed it so far. I really like, the obviously, the weight. That's why I went to it is I've gotten older knees. I felt like, you know, I'd go as light as I could. But I was concerned about the durability. I was concerned about the condensation. I hiked with a lot of people who had them and had them for years. Um, and then I've seen some hacks like uh, taking a clothes pin and uh, pinning back the doors halfway so that you can get the airflow through there. Uh, also, some people talked about how their sleeping bag rubs up against the, the bottom if they're more than six feet tall. So I'm right at that cusp, maybe 5'11", six foot. So I sleep at a diagonal and then I put it, all my gear down at the bottom or up at the top in those two spaces. But, you know, what sold me on the duplex was just the space and be able to have all my gear inside. Like Doug, I got the uh, the Lanshan, I got the Flames Creed, which I think is the same thing, um, the two. And I really like that it's double walled. Now, it is a little bit heavier, but it has the double wall, so it's a lot less of the condensation I found. And I love that tent, and I keep it, and sometimes I use that a lot. So far... You know, fingers crossed, uh, the duplex has served me very well. Um, it's, you know, another one of those transitions. I want to try to go as light as I can just as I get older. And so I really like the duplex. This year, I actually have a big Agnes Tiger Wall UL2, which is a two-person tent. And I've used it a couple of times now, and I absolutely love it. Um, the two-person tent is going to be hard for me to get away from. So this weekend, I went out and, and it rained a lot on that trip. And um, I was able to take my gear inside the tent so it wasn't out sitting even under the rain flag because it's got or two vestibules uh, on both sides, right? I, I like it's got the double doors on the side, which I love. I've never had, believe it or not, a tent where you enter out the side. I always had like crawl out uh, where I sleep. And that's just always, I don't know, been kind of a pain. I don't like that. 
And so I love going out the side. I love being able to sit in my tent, open the door, do my cooking right there. It's really nice. Um, but it has the two vestibules, uh, which I like a lot. But because it was raining, I didn't want to leave my pack outside. It's kind of on the, the wet ground. So I was able to take my pack inside the tent. Uh, everything came in the tent, actually, except for my trekking poles. And, um, and I still had plenty of room. And so I think it's going to be really hard to go back to a one-person tent. But this is my second Big, Ag Big Agnes tent. This one with everything, stakes, and the, the pole comes in at two and a half pounds. Um, so you really, I've been super happy with it. I think it's actually two pounds, nine ounces. And I have no complaints. It sets up super fast. I can set this thing up in less than five minutes, which is really great. Uh, a lot of room in it. It rained all night on me the other night, and I stayed perfectly dry, 100%. Um, I'm kind of a big Agnes fan, not for any reason other than I've had really good luck with them, but I would love to try out maybe one of those Z-Packs tents, so someday I might bite the bullet on that. But, um, so cool, really neat. This is like kind of the first item that we've talked about that we're very different on uh, with what we have, so that's pretty neat. Um, what do you guys use for footwear? Um, I think... If, we, if I count to three and we all say the brand that we use, I have a feeling we're going to say the same brand. So uh, am, yep. I, am I right in saying that we all use Ultras? Ultra. Yeah, yeah I use Ultra as well. <laughs> yeah, so I just got my second pair. Um, I am, I'm formally retiring my first pair of Lone Peaks. Uh, they are now wow. my kind of outdoor shoes. So I was just outside. It's raining again in Michigan. Um, that's why they're all grassy. Uh, but they wore out. They're pretty flat on the bottom right now. You can see those three little spots. Uh, they're all worn out. Now you're seeing the red underneath the, uh, the little toes. And so I was really up in the air. In fact, um, I think in one of the discussion uh, boards on one of our videos, we we're talking about shoes. And I was asking you guys about the, the Temp and the Olympus. And I was going to try the Temp, but I decided to go to the Lone Peaks again. So I've got my second pair of Lone Peaks and I wore them for the first time today. I just wore them outside and um, I love them. They're great. They're fantastic. Uh, the they are. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they changed anything other than the color uh, for this year. I don't think anything else has changed. Um, but this past weekend, um, one of the other shoes I wear, <clears throat> um, I actually take a hiking boot with me and this is a Vasque hiking boot. Um, I don't know the model or anything like that, but Vasque is a good brand. I think those were like $135 or $140, and they keep my feet completely dry. Um, they're really sturdy, so if you're going to do a lot of miles, yeah, they weigh a little bit more, but my theory is if you're not going to go out for a week or two, it's okay to carry around a little weight for a couple days on your feet, and um, better support than a shoe and uh, they keep my feet totally dry. I'm not walking through rivers. So I actually used these this weekend and very comfortable, very durable, kept my feet dry. So once in a while, I do take the hiking boots, but I do love the ultras. So do you guys use anything different than your ultras? Yeah, I've got a pair of uh, Keen Targi 2s, Targi 2s, whatever. I've, I've had those forever. I mean, that's like my, my beat up, you know, hiking boot. Um, also Gore-Tex. I mean, I, I, I like having a lot of protection on my feet. So, um, I guess if I was going really heavy or like really nasty rocky trail, that's probably, I might switch out. Um, but for just like trail hiking and not like super, you know, really bad rugged terrain, um, I'm ultras all the way. Um, and I, I do want to speak to the, uh, drying out thing, by the way. Um, the ones that I brought for show and tell here, <laughs> uh, these are actually the RSMs, the rain, snow, mud. So these are waterproof shoes. Um, now I know that the common wisdom is that you know if you have waterproof shoes and they get wet you're pretty much hosed right because they won't dry out they don't breathe they're hotter but i have to say in my tests these were not any hotter and these did not take any longer to dry um and i'm in california so i mean like it's hot but you know i mean i was like running a garden hose into these shoes to check them out um and they dried pretty fast so I'm not saying they're like magic or whatever, but um, you know, for me, like walking through tall grass or whatever, if it's early, I just don't want to continuously be getting soaked. And that's what I feel like happens to me a lot. The mesh are wonderful for drying out, but like one drop of water is instantly inside your sock. 
you know, you're, you're, um, so that's just something to think about. I mean, if, if I was just totally sweaty, muggy, nasty water all day long, I would definitely wear the mesh. Um, but if I'm just out hiking, I actually really like these quite a bit. And I, I don't uh, perceive any difference in heat, any difference in sweat. And in my test, they dried out like in the air uh, just as fast. Now, maybe if there was a wind blowing, I mean, I, I don't know, things could, could sway that. I mean, it just makes sense that mesh would dry faster than these. Um, all right, so uh, Crow, you also, you use the Ultras. You're speaking a little bit about the Olympus. I don't think we actually heard about what shoe you, is that the shoe you, you usually use? Yeah, in fact, they're they're probably a little dirty because I just uh, just got back from a trip this weekend, and I tried to clean them up a little bit, but uh, they've got a lot of miles on them. I've never had a shoe this comfortable before. I, I've just never had. I mean, it, it really was a game changer for me, and I haven't tried the Lone Peaks, and I hadn't tried the Temps. I would really like to try those shoes as well, maybe down the line, just to see the difference. But I, I went to the um, Olympus. I think I saw Craig Maines hawk on the last AT hike and he, somebody bought him some shoes and I, I've loved them. Now what he did say, the Olympus, the toe flap always comes off and mine did. And I made a mistake this weekend. I decided to super glue it. And instead of putting a rubber band around it, I put like some vice clips <laughs> on the toe. And so it's a good thing I got these a little oversized because it, it bore down on the toe on the toe flap. Now the toe flap is sticking good with the super glue, but uh, it made an indention there. And so now my toe is really right at the edge. So I'm hoping that it'll, it'll come out a little bit. The, the thing I really like, I think what everybody likes about the ultras is the wide toe. Once I saw that wide toe box, I was like, I'm in because that's always been my problem with Merrill's and Sol Solomon's or Salomon's, whatever you call them is that yeah. it's just so narrow and my feet, you know, that trail swell that you get at the end of the day, I just never had any issues. But the other thing that I do real quickly is, I mean, I know we're not talking about socks, but I always couple them with the Njinji toe socks. I would get blisters on my toes every trip until I got those and I haven't had a blister since. I second the Njinji toe socks. That that is a staple now. That and a, that and a pair of darn tufts. That's basically all I wear. I will add a third to the Njinji. That's uh, I've worn them on the last two trips, three trips, and I love them. They take forever to put on, but um, for me anyway. <laughs> but I love them. Um, let's let's go to the third piece of of gear, the final gear we're going to talk about on this one, and that's light on the trail. And that's something I've been playing around with a lot. Um, so I have this. Uh, black diamond the spot i think headlamp and it's interesting because before this headlamp if i took a headlamp on the trail i had an, an energizer 300 lumen that i got at home depot and that thing worked phenomenally it was great you know three AAA batteries same as this so this is interesting this is a i don't know 30 dollar 40 dollar headlamp i forget i got it at rei the energizer i think i got on sale for like 17.99 and it actually weighs less than this. If you're looking for a budget headlamp, just go get an Energizer one because unless you're gonna spend more money, um, it actually weighs less than this Black Diamond by like one ounce or half an ounce or something like that. Uh, but this one works really great. It's got the different brightness. It's got the red light. So it is really handy. Um, and then I just use you know a cell phone light. Uh, that works great. Uh, but one thing I have purchased, and I, I kind of feel like a limp with these. I don't know. This is Ultra Lux, Doug, to the max. I love Ultra Lux. I got I got the big Agnes tent lights, and oh. so I I can have like a disco going on in my tent, and it just a little battery pack here, and um, it's great. It gives you perfect lighting in your tent at night. It's weird. It's a total luxury item, but I'm really loving it. I don't know. What do you guys use? I, I'm, I've got the identity crisis with headlamps. I, I don't know where to go with it, but um, I like, like you, Mark, I got the spot and uh, just got the, the, the lowest level of the spot and have used it for a while. And then I had an issue with it, but I, I think I, on one of my videos, I said, I sent it to Black Diamond. No questions asked. They sent me another one and I was really happy with them. 
Uh, but then I saw everybody with the, the new fancy, the Nightcore 360. So I bought one of these and I haven't even used it yet. So I, I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. I, you know, I may give it away or something on a giveaway, but I, I, I really like it. I've hiked with some people this last weekend and they love it because you can really go down on the lumens to just nothing and the battery life lasts forever. And I've always wanted a USB charger so I could take my my, my brick to charge my phone and uh, my light if I had a problem. But like like Doug said, the uh, I got the Vaunt. They sent me the Vaunt. I think I, I talked to Doug about it before they sent it to me. And he, he really likes this company. And uh, they sent me the Vaunt to test out. So I tested out this weekend and I was like, why am I paying this much for a headlight when the Vaunt is like 11 bucks? It's super light. It has the red light on it. Um, it has four features. It has a strobe, SOS, everything. I'm like, that, that's, a, that's a great lamp. And I don't see why I'm paying you know, enormous amounts of money when that thing works so well. But I will say this, talking about like Ultra Lux, this is the Lux Pro lamp that you hangs on your tent. And uh, I carry it. I know people would laugh at me, but... That sounds pretty ultra lux, Crow. I love how it has that little carabiner on top, and I just hang it from the top of my tent, and uh, it, it's got three or four settings, and it's real real bright. So that's my backup. I love it. Um, this is the Yuko or Uko Air 150. Uh, basically, it's just really light. Uh, this thing comes in at under two ounces, and that's with the headband, which a lot of people just take this headband off and they put a piece of paracord if you just want to get crazy ultra light. Um, but it's very light. It's rechargeable. You know, pretty cool. It's got like you know your standard red and then the bright light, um, and then you can also angle it. So it just makes it really nice for you know. It's decent for hiking. I mostly use it like inside my tent and stuff when I just want my hands free. I'm looking for something. I don't want to have a light that I've got to also hold. Um, if I'm reading, I can use this. I can hang it up for a kind of a lantern. I think uh, weight-wise, it's really great. If you're super counting ounces, this is a good way to go. If I ever break this or whatever, I'm probably just going to go for a, you know, a cheapo. I really like the Vaughn hand lamps. Um, they're, they're just cheap. They're light, feature-rich, um, standard batteries. I don't use them enough to really worry that much about it. For my tent, I like to carry one of these like mechanic flashlights. They're only like half round, so they don't roll off if you drop it. But you know, mine is a flashlight on one end, but then it's like a little mini fluorescent tube on the other end, and it's got a little carabiner hole. So I can snap that thing up. It's super lightweight, but that fluorescent light is really soft. It's wide band. Um, that thing has been fantastic. I mean, that, that can be a good backup. You can clip it on a strap to give you some, some light. You can put it behind you if you're riding a bike. You can clip it on as just like a warning light. Um, and you can also just clip it and hang it from your tent like a little mini fluorescent. So that, that thing's been pretty awesome too. All right, cool. Well, thanks guys for sharing that stuff. And uh, hey, be sure to go over and check out Backcountry Pilgrim. I'm going to put the link in the bottom and make sure you watch his video where we talk about three other pieces of gear. And of course, you got to go check out As the Crow Flies. His link is going to be in the bottom as well to a video that he's got where we talk about three other items. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and the bell for notifications. And we'll see you guys on the next video.